Just another uh, quick video update. A few things have changed. Um, some things I've discovered. Here we have, uh, I have FSX queued up. Um, just sitting here, uh, engine not running, uh, engines. Um, avionics is on, so. Um, what I did, this is the Ablesoft electronic flight bag. Definitely one of the best investments I ever made. Bar none. This thing is amazing. What I found, um, this airport needed refreshed on the runway headings. I always got an error for a runway assignment not available, so I finally read the instructions and figured out I edited the, the text files and added them. What I also did is up on the, the main, this FSX PC, it has a data provider that provides the information to this slave, which is on the other PC. I hit rebuild airports or something to that nature because it it warns you in the instructions once you read them that uh, you need to anytime you do a scenery change you need to update it and uh, I just it was a one click thing and uh, now um, this is the airport I actually edited heavily and it now shows the gates and general parking and everything that I added as well as the aprons and and all kinds of information that it didn't have before. So the electronic flight bag was able to pull that information and render it right from the uh, the FSX scenery file, which again, no surprise, the Ablesoft program is uber stellar, just, just top notch. Um, I'm super thrilled with this. Anyway, um, one more minor thing that changed. My MFD display, this camera will work out a little bit better. I don't know why it's not auto-focusing, but uh, eh, whatever. Um, I now have airports and my uh, flight plan loaded in. If we try zooming in, if that'll help. Sorry, trying a different camera today and hoping that it would be a little bit better, but uh, it looks like heck on this screen. Anyway, we'll carry on. Um, I assigned the FSUIPC offset for the encoder to one of the unused buttons on the EFIS. Uh, yeah, it's a cheat, but right now I'm, I'm still waiting to get the PO keys card working out. So uh, I can now change the range on my map, which is pretty darn handy. And with that, I was able to actually load the flight plan. So through the MFD, this thing really like heck. Uh, through the MFD I'm able to load the flight plan and this is uh, Jet 45 does a super crappy job. It, it can't handle the naming, it can't handle much and it only shows the six most recent in the folder but whatever it's a uh, it's a necessary evil so what I did is I uh, set up the flight plan through the Ablesoft program uh, right now we're at Ch Charlie Yankee Golf Delta, heading to uh, Charlie Yankee X-ray Uniform, and uh, on the Jet 45, the top one is the most recent, which is what I saved it from here, from the electronic flight bag to the FSX PC, and then the Jet 45 can retrieve it from the FSX PC. Um, yeah, a long-winded explanation, but it is what it is, and. Uh, now I actually have a route information and I can toggle uh, my map range and uh, whether I want to see airports and nav aids and all kinds of nifty stuff. Uh, there, the screen gets pretty busy at, uh, at 50 miles which you can actually see the whole flight plan if this camera is capturing it. Anyway, um, yep, works pretty good. Uh, I got TCAS. I can adjust the range on my TCAS here. Uh, I'm right at 40, and we can zoom it right into local. Nothing local, no traffic going on, so nothing.
nothing to worry about. Uh, what doesn't work is when I do the reversion over to this panel, uh, I can't adjust my TCAS range. It's a Jet 45 bug, but uh, hopefully they'll address that. Uh, my reversion here, it's sometimes really grumpy to get it to do reversion, but eventually it'll go. And there we are. I'm able to get everything on screen over here as well. Uh, you have to load the flight plan in separately over here. Oh, one last thing I was able to do is get my V speeds. Again, this camera is just plain not going to work for this. Uh, I got my V speeds programmed in. I just put them right into the INI file because, uh, again, I don't have these encoders programmed. And uh, actually, I can't get the FSU IPC offset to affect Jet 45 for the uh, uh, minimums or for the V speeds. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but I'll figure it out at a later date. So, yep, pretty much uh, that's where we sit. Now I can uh, now I can actually display my flight plan. Uh, all my buttons are functional down here, and every time you do reversion, it disappears over here, so you have to go back to the summary page, and works like a champ. So, a few bugs, um, definitely not much I can do about it, it's not my hardware, it's a uh, software issue, so, but now, with, uh, with that display, I can actually see what's going on. Normally, I just track everything on the EFB and uh, for route planning and everything but uh, it's nice to have it on the MFD rate at eye level one extra little bonus and uh, I'll put this question out to you guys leave some uh, comments uh, um, in in the comments area below but how do you handle uh, load shedding in the cockpit um, I'll put this out there what I've found is uh, we have two pilots for a reason. <laughs> and uh, when I took a flight last night, I, uh, I did this exact route. And coming in to uh, on final approach, what happened, it was my own fault. Um, the way I have uh, the one EFIS button programmed, um, when I switched over from FMS, like GPS course, I needed to capture the localizer, which I was getting on my Nav 2, and I knew right where I was, no problem. Uh, I messed up. And uh, I didn't actually, I was on uh, Nav 2 instead of uh, the localizer, and I missed it. And uh, in that short amount of time, everything that went wrong, um, I just about plowed the thing into the ground. I was about 900 feet messing around, fiddling around with the auto autopilot, um, trying to figure out, kind of troubleshoot what's going on instead of flying the aircraft. And... Uh, I was very close to plowing into the ground. It was it was pretty funny when I finally uh, got the ground proximity warnings and, and took a look up at the top screen and sort of went, oh, should be outside the plane. Uh, but how do you guys handle uh, load shedding? There's a lot going on. The more I interface and the more functions correctly, the more there is to do. It's it's quite simple, and, and items like the, the Avasoft electronic flight bag are, are, are priceless. I incredible. I have the chart on demand. It's right there. I know what's going on, where I am, but there's still a lot to do between navigation, configuring the aircraft, and actually flying the aircraft. And when something goes wrong and you're, you think that you're cruising along on autopilot, meanwhile the altitude hold, hold kicked off because I was in approach mode, uh, it's pretty easy to plow the thing into the ground. How do you guys handle that? Um, any uh, any tips, tricks, anything's appreciated. Anyway, um, one last thing. I want to give a shout out to uh, one of my subscribers, and I'm also subscribed to him, uh, Norwegian737. Check him out. Um, he's got an amazing 737 shell build on the go. And uh, some really great videos. Uh, looks pretty much scratch built shell. Looks amazing. Huge amount of work. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing his build shape up. And and I, if you look at some of the, his early videos, you you'll find that he has uh, the electronics already covered. Um, check it out. Uh, big shout out to you, buddy. Um, 
Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for today. I'm looking to uh, do some more interfacing and maybe take a flight. And seeing as I've got everything queued up, uh, maybe see if I can uh, get this thing off the ground and enjoy my new display, which is a whole lot busier, which in turn is going to add to the load even more, perhaps, or, or distractions, anyway. Thanks for watching.